From Hope to Kamloops, the Coquihalla Highway is one of the most important roads in southern BC, a vital link in the province's supply chain connecting commercial traffic from the lower mainland to the rest of the country. Coquihalla was really built as the commercial uh, trucking route with good highways, nice grades, nice and wide, safe to operate and can accommodate a large volume of uh, commercial traffic along it. But that steady flow of goods came to a sharp stop last year. Flooding from an atmospheric river damaged more than 20 sections of the highway. Some parts of the road completely disappeared. The scope and scale of the damage was really staggering, and it wasn't just the road, but the adjacent infrastructure, so the pipelines, the power lines, secondary roads. Hewitt was one of the dozens of companies that the BC government called in days after the disaster. The engineering firm took the lead on designing highway repairs, and along with other contractors, its staff were some of the first to see the scale of the damage up close. I was absolutely amazed at the, the power of the water and how fast it would find a new, a new route. The government called the repair efforts one of the most remarkable engineering feats in BC. As many as 300 people worked day and night on the Coquihalla for 35 days to make it safe to drive again. And this is how they did it. The first obstacle was getting repair crews and equipment in safely. The Coquihalla has multiple bridges that cross several major rivers, and with many of them destroyed, engineers had to prioritize those sites. Engineers say two of the major sites were the Jessica Bridge and the Bottle Top Bridge. Those were difficult for two reasons. One, the spans of the bridges had to be replaced to get them reopened, but secondly, because that was now your constraint for how you could get equipment and have a reliable access to get equipment to fix the remainder of the areas that were between uh, those two points. Using helicopters and drones to survey the damage, they were able to pinpoint the hardest hit areas and gather key geotechnical data. Then they figured out where to start. We would send drones that had uh, LIDAR capability or photogrammetry. It'll essentially shoot lasers out through uh, an imaging process and then the reflection of what comes back from the ground is gathered well, in the device in the scanner. And then it records all those, you know, millions and millions of data points that it collects through the lasers. And then that information can quickly be transferred to a design team that's sitting off site to then use it and, and develop plans and uh, drawings uh, for any remediation work that has to be uh, performed. Once the designs were finalized, the heavy machinery was rolled in. Hundreds of workers repaired erosion and rebuilt what the water had torn down. The fixes work for now, but won't last permanently. So what do engineers think needs to be built for the highways to withstand another catastrophe? When we look at stream flows, we look at, um, at models that try and predict potential future flows under different climate scenarios. So that might mean that um, instead of sizing a culvert the way we did in 1985 when the highway opened, we'll size it um, to a much bigger size. We need to agree together what we want to do, how we can adapt that infrastructure to be more resilient, and how much as a community we're willing to invest to manage that risk in the future. As long-term repairs continue along the highway, 2021's floods serve as a reminder that no matter how important the Coquihalla Highway is to BC, it belonged to nature first. Beneath Brach, CBC News, Vancouver.